The intent of this video is to compare the B-17 and B-24 bombers' combat effectiveness and address why the B-17 was a superior performer in all significant bombing metrics. The combat effectiveness of a weapon system is measured by various parameters, such as kill ratio for fighters. The combat efficiency of bombers is based on the number of bombs on target divided by the number of bomber losses, as defined on this declassified SYNPAC document titled, Black Intelligence Memorandum No. 9. In this evaluation, we will compare this and 13 other significant bomber parameters and summarize the findings at the end. B-17s and B-24s were deployed in most World War II theaters. This video will focus on bombers deployed by the 8th Army Air Forces operating from Great Britain and the 15th Army Air Forces operating from Italy. This table lists a distribution of heavy bombers deployed by the 8th and 15th Air Forces from a 1947 U.S. Air Force Historical Studies document titled The Combined Bomber Offensive. In May 1944, the 8th Air Force's fleet consisted of 1,865 heavy bombers where 64% were B-17s and 36% were B-24s. The 15th Air Force's heavy bomber fleet is around two-thirds the size of the 8th and is comprised of 74% B-24s and 26% B-17s. This page shows the various 8th Air Force bomber divisions, wings, and groups. The second bomb division is comprised of B-24s, whereas the first and third are made up of B-17s. The 100th bomb group is highlighted here, which is part of the 13th bomb wing. This page from a declassified 1944 B-29 Superfortress document outlines specifications of the B-17, B-29, and B-24. The B-17 and B-24 models have the same basic weights, max gross weights, and takeoff power. However, the wing area of the B-17 is 35% larger than the B-24's Davis wing at 1,420 versus 1,050 square feet. This has an effect on the plane's flying quality, stability of bombing platform, takeoff and landing speeds, formation flying characteristics, and optimum altitude. This page from a 1983 Office of the Air Force History document titled The Army Air Forces in World War II, Volume 6, Men and Planes, outlines the key differences between the B-17 and B-24. The B-24s possessed initial advantages over the B-17s. It had a larger bomb load and longer range. The B-24s adopted in the Pacific theaters retained these advantages. When adopted against the Germans, though, they lacked sufficient firepower and armor. When the B-24s were modified to overcome these shortcomings, the weight increased and it became less stable in flight. In January 1945, General Doolittle expressed his preference for the B-17 over the B-24. By January 1945, the B-17's range had increased, robbing the B-24 of its chief range advantage. Against enemy attacks, the B-17's ruggedness was well proven as a better pick. This page snippet from a Maxwell Air Force Base Reel A 1377 compares the bomb load, armaments, and range characteristics of the B-17, B-24, and B-29. The B-24 is operating in the Southwest Pacific area enjoyed a 6.6% tactical cruise range advantage over the B-17s. On the other hand, B-17s have an 8.8% tactical cruise range advantage over the B-24s, when operating in the European theater at 1,740 miles versus 1,600 miles. These tactical range cruise values are for a 6,000 pound bomb load at equivalent maximum gross weights. The end of war B-24 performance parameters are shown on this page from a September 1945 AAF Technical Services Command document titled Tactical Planning. The range of a B-24 at 65,000 pound gross weight, 5,000 pound bomb load at an altitude of 10,000 feet equates to 2,100 miles. The B-17G model flying with roughly the same parameters will travel 7% farther at 2,250 miles. This page addresses key combat parameters between the B-17s and B-24s from a 1947 Military Analysis Division, United States Strategic Bombing Survey report titled, Bombing Accuracy, U.S. AAF Heavy and Medium Bombers in the European Theater of Operations. The B-17 is a more combat-effective bomber than the B-24 when measured by these four parameters. Bombing Accuracy, Bomber Life or Attrition, Tons Drop per Effective Sortie, and Bomber Losses per 1,000 Sorties. This chart outlines overall bombing accuracy of the 8th Air Forces from a 1945 document titled Statistical Summary of 8th Air Force Operations European Theater. The x-axis is a month and year. 
The y-axis is the percentage of bombs that fell within a 1,000 or 2,000 foot mean point of impact under good to fair visual conditions. This page quantifies bomb accuracy based on the percentage of bombs that fell within 1,000 feet of the assigned aim point from a 1947 U.S. Air Force Historical Studies document titled The Combined Bomber Offensive. Bombing accuracy is considered excellent if more than 50% of the bombs fell within 1,000 feet of the aim point. Unsatisfactory if only 15 to 20 percent of the bombs fell within 1,000 feet of the aim point. A mission is a failure if less than 5 percent of the bombs fell within 1,000 feet of the aim point. The data can be summarized in this table. This page from a 1945 Operational Analysis Section Headquarters 8th Air Force document titled Report on Bombing Accuracy 8th Air Force outlines bombing accuracy of both the B-17s and B-24s during 1944. 38.3% of bombs dropped by B-17s fell within 1,000 feet of the aim point, while 28.2% of bombs dropped by the B-24s fell within 1,000 feet of the aim point. The B-17's bomb accuracy is 35% higher than the B-24's. B-17 bomb accuracy can be rated as fair and B-24's as poor. The 8th Air Force has operated their B-17s and B-24s under different conditions and targets, so a direct bomb accuracy comparison may not be valid. A comparison of the 15th Air Force's bomb accuracy is more valid since their B-24s and B-17s flew side by side, attacking the same targets to a greater extent. The B-17s placed 32.4% of their bombs within 1,000 feet of the aim point, while B-24s placed 30.4% of their bombs within 1,000 feet of the aim point. B-17s have a 6.6% better bomb accuracy record over B-24s. A lower bomb accuracy translates to more bombers will need to be deployed to achieve target destruction. The report goes on to summarize, the B-17s flew at higher altitudes with a larger attacking force and more planes per combat box than B-24s. These factors tend to reduce bomb accuracy. The data clearly shows the B-17 is a superior bomber. Combat losses for every 1,000 sorties for B-24s exceeded the losses for the B-17s. The statement is backed up by this chart, which shows B-17 combat loss rate averaged 1.32 bombers per every 100 sorties, while 1.7 B-24s were lost per every 100 sorties. The B-17's combat loss rate was 22% lower than the B-24s. Tonnage per each bomber lost for the 8th and 15th Air Forces are shown in these tables. The combat effectiveness of a bomber boils down to this metric. The higher the value, the more combat effective the bomber. The 8th Air Force values are within 2% of each other. The 15th Air Force data is much more divergent, where a B-17 was lost for every 192 tons dropped, while a B-24 was lost for every 107 tons dropped. The data for the 15th is a better comparison, as they would have likely flown side by side during these missions. The 15th threat exposure is likely equivalent, where the 8th Air Force usually assigns their B-24s to different targets. This key premise is backed up on this page from a Department of the Army Surgeon General report titled Wound Ballistics. Unofficially, B-17s were generally deployed on more difficult and heavily defended bombing missions, whereas B-24s would have been assigned to attack targets of lesser importance. This statement is likely pertaining to the 8th Air Forces. Given this, it would be acceptable to adopt the 15th values as a better representation of tons dropped per bombers lost. B-17s have an 81% increase in bombs dropped per bombers lost over the B-24s. The mission life per bomber is shown on this table. The 15th Air Force's B-17's life is 2.16 times the life of a B-24 at 77 versus 35.5 sorties. This table outlines the accident rate for the B-17's and B-24's based on 8th Air Force data collected in 1944 and 1945. The number of operational accidents for the B-17's equated to 0.22 per 100 takeoffs where the accident rate of the B-24 is equated to 0 0.30 accidents per 100 takeoffs. Overall, the B-17s experienced 27% fewer accidents than the B-24s. Part of the B-24's weakness is discussed on this page from a 1945 Army Air Force's Evaluation Board document titled 8th Air Force Tactical Development. B-24s are more difficult to fly in formations and have reduced visibility, such that the 2nd Bomb Division's B-24 formations were changed to compensate for this deficiency. 
One of the other reasons why B-24 bombing accuracy was less than on a B-17 is described on this page from a 1945 AAF bomb accuracy report. The method of bomb release was different between the 8th and 15th Air Forces. The 8th generally dropped all formation bombs on salvo release where the 15th usually released their bombs at the minimum intervalometer setting. The salvo release lever is not positioned in an easy to reach location on the B-24s. This may account for some of the bomb accuracy discrepancies between the bombing platforms flying with the 8th. The likelihood of surviving a water rescue is 37.9% for the B-17 and 26.5% for the B-24. The B-17 crew members have a 43% higher rescue rate. This is due to the low-slung large wing on the B-17, which provides better water landing characteristics. The B-24's high wing design does not provide equivalent water ditching qualities. Crew members prefer the B-17 to the B-24, as discussed in this May 1944 memo titled Report on Survey of Air Crew Personnel in the 8th, 9th, 12th, and 15th Air Forces. 43% more B-24 deliveries were accepted than B-17s, as shown in this quarterly delivery chart from the reference highlighted. Based on the data evaluated, we can summarize the findings in this spreadsheet where the columns are the parameters ranked in order based on the channel's assessment of the metric's contribution to the bombing platform's combat effectiveness, bomber advantage, percent estimated benefit, and notes or annotations of the evaluation. The most significant bombing effectiveness parameter measurements are in the top six scorecard rows where B-17s hold a significant combat advantage over the B-24s, 81% more bombs released per combat loss, this single parameter is the best measure of the combat effectiveness of a bomber. 6.6% .6 more bombs on target with 22% fewer bomber losses, more than twice the bomber combat life, and the B-17s have better visibility and formation flying qualities. The rest of the parameters are just icing on the cake, which also trend towards the B-17 except for the number of deliveries. Do you agree with the evaluation results? The B-17 was a better suited bomber over Reich-occupied Europe. If you've enjoyed this bomber evaluation deep dive review, please consider engaging with the video by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.